thank you everybody for joining us. Today we're going to be doing is starting our new how-to series of webinars. A couple of you know short snippets, how to do something, a lot of information, short time. So what we're going to be doing today is the eSpecs and Revit BIM round trip. Essentially what I'm going to be doing is going over the process and showing you how easy and quick it is to go back and forth between Revit and eSpecs. What you're doing typically is you're making your BIM model, and that BIM model is going to do your construction documentation. One of the parts of the BIM model that Revit doesn't really do, though, is your specifications. Now, to do that, what I can do is use eSpecs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a quick project in here, tie the two together. So I'm going to say new, new project, pick my client. Now my client could either be the kind of project or the actual name of my client choose my kind of specifications I'm doing, give my project number, I'll say 111, project example, that creates my brand new project, and it shows me my specs if I want to start taking a look at things and adding things. Now from this point, what I'm going to do is hop over to Revit, and I'm going to combine the two. So I'm going to go to my add-ins, which as you'll see is pretty full. I'll pull my eSpecs down, makes it a little bit easier to work with. And the first thing I'm going to do is connect this to my model. So I've got my eSpecs here. There's my presentation, or my project that I just created. So I'm going to tie the two together. Say OK. OK. I'll update my eSpecs. That synchronizes the two together. And then I just come back in here and say refresh. Now, I now have four settings for this project in, in eSpecs have almost like a boilerplate. No matter what project I am I'm in, and regardless of what I physically modeled, these are sections that I'm going to need typically. So you can customize that and set that up. Those would be your default specs you'll always have. Now, that's nice if I have things that are always there, but depending on the project, I'll have different things. For example, I'll have different walls. So I'll draw a quick brick wall, and I'll do a, let's see here, do a concrete wall. There we go. Can't see that one because it's going downward. And then I'll try and drop in some furniture. So a few things. Tell it to update these specs again. Send that back. That tells me it's done. Pop back the specs again. Tell that to refresh one more time. There we go. Now, I added a bunch of stuff here. Not everything is creating my specs just yet. So I'll say, OK, let me add these in. And then what I can actually do is get a report. This shows me what is creating specifications and what is not. So if I notice here that my foundation wall that I just drew is not creating specs, OK, well, I've got to take care of that. Same thing for that furniture that I did. So there's a few things in there that maybe I'm not taking advantage of. So from this, I can go back to Revit. The Revit user can also do a quick search. This shows me all that information, and I can confirm and set things up in here to make sure that as much or as little of the model that I want will be driving my specifications. So that way I can keep things coordinated throughout my process very, very quickly and very easily. Now, I did this at the very beginning of a project, essentially. It doesn't have to be that way. You can always add this later on. Either way you go, though, you can see from here, within five minutes, I've got the two of them together, synchronized, and from there on, I can start modifying and tying things up. So, hope you enjoyed this little snippet. If you have any other questions or you're curious about more information on that, please let us know and contact us. We'll be glad to help you out. We do this kind of thing for everybody all the time. So thank you very much, and have a good day.